Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this three drawer, three storage basket desk and I'm making this for the craft room of my doll's house. So I've made it to a particular size to go along the chimney breast in there and during the tutorial I'll show you how you can make this wider or narrower depending on the space that you want to fit it. As usual the cutting list is in the description box below so let's get started. So begin by cutting all of the pieces needed apart from the drawers and the baskets and we'll cut those once we've constructed the desk and then we can get exact measurements for those. And you'll notice that I've done the left hand side of the desk using 2.5mm sheet wood and that's just because I want the drawers to be external drawers so the actual drawer fronts will overlap the outside of the unit and by using 2.5 millimetre thick sheet wood or 3 30 seconds of an inch you've got more there for the drawers to actually sit on on the outside but that will become clearer once we've constructed and we're going to begin by constructing this left hand side so we're going to begin by scoring lines across the back and side pieces for placement of the shelves and so we don't have to do that three times we're going to join these pieces together so press them together so you've got a nice flush edge along the top and then just use a little bit of masking tape like that. Same there. And then put a couple of pieces along the bottom as well. Turn that piece lengthways and we're going to begin with a line 18 millimetres from what will become the top edge. So do your first little pencil mark, 18 millimetres. And that is 45 sixty-fourths of an inch. The second line is at 33.5 millimetres. And that is 1 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. And the final line is at 49 millimetres. And that is 1 and 59 sixty-fourths of an inch. So I'll just give you those again in millimetres. 18, 33.5, 49, and in inches, 45 sixty-fourths, 1 and 5 sixteenths, and 1 and 59 sixty-fourths. So do those at the other side of the wood as well. Turn the piece back the right way, and then join those up. Position in your rule just below the little pencil mark, to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib. And I'll just turn it around to do that one so that the ruler doesn't just tip off the end of the wood. And then you can remove the masking tape. So we're going to begin by attaching a side piece to the outer edge of the back piece. So apply glue along the edge of the back piece. Attach the side piece so you've got nice flush edges along the top and bottom and so that your pencil lines join up. Press those together. Use a spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. And then bring in your top piece. And you've got four pieces here the same. So you've got top, bottom and two shelves. So bring in one of those pieces and we're going to attach that so it sits on the inside edge of the joined pieces. Flush to the top like that. And you'll notice in the cutting list that I've advised cutting these pieces so that the shortest edge is in the direction of the grain. And that's because that's the edge that's going to be facing towards the front of the unit. And the edge of the wood that runs in the direction of the grain is always neater. So press that into place, making sure you've got a nice flush line along the top Get that flush edge along the top of the back piece first and then you can pull in the side piece to meet there like that. Press those together 
If I turn it around like that, you can see you've got nice flush lines along the back and the side there, giving us a nice flat top, which we'll eventually attach our desktop to. Again, get in there and remove any excess glue. You can now bring in a second of those four pieces, and this is going to sit just above that next pencil line. So apply glue along the side and the back. Press that into place, making sure it's right into that corner. When I say just above the pencil line, I mean so that you can just see the pencil line below the piece. Okay, and give those a good press together. So now bring in the next of those pieces. And again, this is going to sit above that next pencil line. Put that into place. Again, so you can just see the pencil lines below the piece. So you can see where you're putting it. And then give it a good firm press into place. And then our final piece, same thing again. Again, sitting just above that line. Press it into place. Turn the piece now onto its top and we go into position little bottom plinth piece but I want this to sit back from that front edge a little bit so to position that I'm using a little piece of three millimeter strip wood that's one eighth of an inch and I'm just going to place that along the front edge of that bottom shelf so that you've got a nice flush line along the front so I'm just using this as a spacer so then apply glue to a long and a short edge of the plinth, if I can pick it up, and then pop that into place so it's sitting just behind that piece of strip wood. Press it against the bottom piece and onto the side piece as well. So get it into position and then give it a press. Holding onto the plinth, you can then remove the little piece of strip and then get in and give it a good press into place, making sure you're not pushing that bottom shelf out of place. We're now ready to attach the remaining side, so apply glue along each of the side edges. a little bit along the edge of the plinth and then bring in your side piece so that your pencil lines are on the inside. Get your top piece lined up first, you've got that nice flush line along the top there. You also want to have a flush line along the front so I just need to come forward at the bottom there. And then your back and the bottom should also line up. Give it a good press together and then I'm going to grab some masking tape and we'll secure that piece and then leave it whilst the glue dries. So lay the piece down on its side. I'm going to put the first piece of tape right over the side like that. Pull it nice and tightly. To lay it on its back like that and put a couple of pieces right over the front just to pull it all together. Put it nice and tightly. 
and then I'll put a piece across the bottom as well. I'm just pulling that little plinth forward. I think it looked as though it had dropped back a bit. And this will hold that all in place as well. That piece can then be left to dry. The right hand side of the desk is going to be constructed in exactly the same way. So I've started off by doing my lines again at 18 millimetres, 33.5 millimetres and 49 millimetres. And that is 45 sixty-fourths of an inch, 1 and 5 sixteenths of an inch and 1 and 59 sixty-fourths of an inch. And now I'm going to construct it in the same way as the left hand side. And that piece as well can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and then sand each of these pieces on all sides. And I sand them face down as well like that, using small circular motions. And that gives you a really nice flush piece with a nice flat front edge. We're now going to join these two pieces together using what I've called the central joiner. Now this piece is quite useful if you want to make your desk wider. Now I'm making mine the width of that chimney breast so I've sort of sized this piece accordingly but if you wanted it to be a bit wider or even narrower to fit in a particular space then you can adjust the size of this so it would still be the same depth obviously as your sort of draw units but you would adjust the width. Okay, so turn the two pieces upside down and you have to then think about also which side you want your drawers and which side you're going to have the baskets. Now I'm having my drawers on the left hand side and the baskets on the right. So I'll position them opposite sides when I'm joining them upside down. If you, if you don't really mind, then it doesn't matter. You don't have to think about that part of it. So apply glue to each edge of the joiner piece and then attach your first unit making sure you've got a nice flush edge along the front and back. Press them together and then you can bring in your other unit and press that into place as well. Make sure that join is staying flat against your work surface, otherwise we'll have a wonky desk. Give it a good firm press. Make sure you're pressing towards the bottom. I've done this before and I've sort of crushed it all in, <laughs> crushed it all inwards. And then just really carefully slide that along your work surface and that can be left to dry. So whilst that's drying, we're going to bevel our desk top and we're going to bevel one long edge and both short edges. So with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, hold the piece against it at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you, keeping it at that angle. And that's just starting to bevel off there, but you want to keep going until you've got a nice sharp bevel. Like that. And then do the same at each end. You can then tidy that piece up in your hand with a piece of fine grade sandpaper. Add 
desktop is now ready to attach so carefully turn the desk the right way around and we're going to apply glue to the top a bit of glue left on this card I think it's still okay make sure you get it right along the edges and we're going to attach the top so that the flat unbeveled edge is is flush with the back of the unit and the bevels are overhanging at each side so pop it down and just use your fingers to make sure you've got a nice flush line along the back and then slide it along so that those bevels are overhanging at the edges just carefully pick that up and check that it's in the right position press it down pressing on the sort of units at the side and then you can very carefully pick it up and remove any excess glue from around the joins Not too much on there and what I want to start by doing is putting a piece of masking tape straight over the top and then I've got my clamps handy to clamp around the remaining edges. So sit that over there like that, pull in nice and tightly. I'm going to turn that around and I'm going to put a piece over the back of each unit. And pull in nice and tightly. That will stop that from lifting up at the back. Like that. And then I'm going to attach clamps wherever I can fit them really. So a couple in the drawer openings. Trying to work quite quickly because my battery's just started flashing. I think I've got a minute or so, but <laughs> if I just suddenly go, that's why. But once I've attached the clamps, this piece can then be left to dry. And then I'll get a few along that front edge as well. Oops, that's not got a a tip on it that one just two along there okay so that can then be left to dry so it's now time to cut the pieces needed for the drawers now I always advise as you know not to cut the pieces needed until after construction of the main unit. With these particular drawers it's slightly different. If I just take one of the drawer fronts there, these drawers are external fronted drawers so they sit on the outside of the unit like that. So the pieces for the main part of the drawer I've made slightly smaller than the drawer opening. So that piece just slides nicely inside, there'll be a little bit of gap in at each edge and then the front of the drawer hides all of that behind it and stops the drawer from going all the way back to the back of the unit. So these drawers are slightly easier but I would still stick to that advice and say don't cut the pieces until after construction of this and then to construct the drawers we do the same as we would normally do. So begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece pop that back down and attach the sides making sure you've got a nice flush line along the front and back Just pop those into place like that and I'm going to grab my spare pieces of strip wood just to press those into place. So we put those alongside like that, give them a press. And this way you're applying even pressure all the way along the joins. Like that. 
carefully slide that piece along and that can be left to dry and then you can do the same with your other drawers. So we're now ready to attach the back piece. So apply glue along the back edges. Pop that back down, press the back piece into place and you may just need to pull the, slide, the sides out slightly to meet the edges of the back piece so that you've got a nice square back. Again, give that a good firm press. Do the same with the other drawers. So we're now ready to attach the drawer fronts. And for this, we're going to use a spare piece of 0.8 millimeter strip wood, or 1 32nd of an inch. And we're going to sit that underneath the drawer so that we get a lip beneath the bottom of the drawer front. So the drawer front really is sitting centrally, if I sort of turn it that way around and show you, over the drawer. So we've got an even sort of overhang all the way around and then it will sit nicely on the outside of the drawer opening. So apply glue to the front of the drawer Like that. Put that onto your spare piece of wood and then bring in your drawer front. Oops. I turn that around like that and then press the drawer front so that you've got that little overhanging lip at each side. And I'm just judging that by eye, but you want probably about a millimetre overhanging at each side there of the drawer got time to sort of jiggle that around if you need to. And then press the drawer front into place, making sure that both pieces are sort of flat against your spare piece of wood and flat against your work surface. If I then hold that up, you can see that we've got that little lip underneath at each side and hanging overhanging at the top as well there. So pop that to one side to dry and I'm going to stand it up like that and then do the same with the remaining drawers. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry we can attach the drawer knobs and I'm using these little 2.5 millimeter diameter turned knobs that's 3 30 seconds of an inch and I've made a little pencil dot in the center of the drawer front there and I've got a 1.6 millimeter drill bit in my mini drill. So hold the drill upright and support the drawer with a finger <laughs> and then drill down nice and slowly into the drawer front like that and then I always just like to jiggle the drill around a bit just to make the hole slightly wider as I think the little stem of the draw knob is slightly wider than the 1.6. Try the draw knob into place first. And if it's a little tight as mine is there, you can use a cocktail stick just to make that a little bit wider still. And obviously if you've got the, the right size um, drill bit then use that. So I'll just try that again. Yeah, that's a nice fit now. And even though it is a nice tight fit, I always like just to use a little tiny bit of glue just around the hole like that, just to make sure it's really secure in there. in make sure it's sitting flat against the drawer front and give it a good firm press 
remove any excess glue and then do the same with the remaining drawers. Once you've allowed enough time for those draw knobs to dry into place, this piece is ready for paint. I'm using my North Pole white emulsion paint for this, as I did for the little doll's house unit in the craft room. And I've got a little plastic tray here to stand the pieces on whilst the paint is drying. So those pieces have now had two coats of paint and I sanded gently after the first coat had dried using a 500 grade sandpaper. And whilst that second coat is drying, I'm going to make a start on the baskets. So to construct the baskets, begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece. And this is just like constructing a drawer, which I'm sure you've seen me do many times. Pop that back down and attach your side pieces, making sure you've got a flush line along the front and back. And then I'm going to grab that spare piece of strip wood again, just to give these a good firm press into place. I'll move that one along then. Right, let's grab the strip wood. one again, apply glue along the front and back edges pop that back down again and attach the front and back pieces you may need to bring the sides out to line up with the sides of those pieces so that you've got a nice flush square or box shape lined up like that and then you can get your hands around and press it all together don't worry if you've got any sort of little overhanging or taller bits of wood because we'll be sanding them all off once the glue has completely dried and then pop that to one side to dry and carry on with your next one So once you've allowed enough time for the baskets to dry, sand them on all edges so you've got a nice flush box there. And then for my baskets, I'm using this fine hessian for the base. And then I've got three sort of pastel shades here for the actual basket. And for the hessian or the base of the basket, you need to cut that 120 millimetres long by 19 millimetres high and that's four and three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch so that's for the base and then for the fabric part same length so 120 millimetres four and three quarters of an inch by 25 millimetres high or one inch high and we're going to begin with the fabric pieces and we're going to fold over a little hem so begin by creasing it into the fabric and this only needs to be about five millimetres. And that's 13 64ths of an inch. But you don't need to measure it, just sort of fold a little bit over like that. Crease that in, do that with the other two pieces as well. Oops. like that and then we're actually going to glue those down and to do that I'm using my Gorilla Wood Glue which I find works really well with fabric so apply glue along the hemline 
Put that to one side to dry off a moment and I just do that because I find if you let it dry just for a minute or so, when you fold it over it's less likely to seep through and stain the fabric. So pop that over there, apply glue to your next one. last one and then you can go back to your first one and actually fold the hem over. Pop that to one side to dry. And if you're using a gingham fabric, always choose the printed gingham rather than the corded gingham because I find that the corded doesn't really glue very well. That one as well. And now we can actually glue the hessian to the basket. So apply glue around the base of the basket, probably about halfway up like that. So go all the way around like that and then take your piece of hessian and place it on what will become the front edge of the basket so that you're leaving an even amount overhanging at each side and so that the flap is sort of going on to the bottom of the basket. Press that down and you can hold it and feed it around like that. Press it down at the back. Feed it around the other side. And then you might just need to snip a little bit, bit off at the back so you haven't got too much overhanging back there. And then you can apply a little bit more glue. And we'll flap there and then join those together. And then take your scissors and just snip down the corners like that. Just fold those out so you can get to the bottom of the basket and apply glue. Fold those over. Creasing along the side there as well at the same time. Like that. And then we can glue down the front and back flaps. that a good press down and that can then be left to dry so stand it up that way and leave it to dry and do the same with the remaining crepes. So we're now going to tie bows into the centre of our fabric strips and this is obviously optional but I just think it adds a nice little finishing touch. And for this, I'm just using regular white sewing cotton. So cut a piece about wrist to elbow length and thread it onto your sewing needle. Take your piece of fabric, fold it in half to find the center. And we're putting the little bow along the hemmed edge. Thread your needle through probably about a millimeter up from the bottom. But again, you don't have to measure, just do that by eye. Pull it through, open out your fabric, make that into a knot first of all and then tie a bow as small as you can. Like 
place your thumb in the centre and pull the strings so that you're tightening up the bows. Do the same at the other side till it sort of disappears under your thumb. <laughs> and then again pull the bows tight. Hold on to them again and go smaller still. And we'll just sort of tighten in and then pull in the strings until we've got a nice sized bow. I need to make that one a little bit smaller and I just need to pull that other one out a little bit. Like that. And then hold on to your bow and you can trim off the strings. So you're leaving a little bit overhanging at the bottom of the fabric there. And then I just like to use a little bit of glue to tidy that bow up and put it into a nice position so it's not sort of at an angle there. So apply a little bit of glue to the back of each bow. And you can use the cocktail stick to get it into a nice position. This is a little bit fiddly, so just take your time. Just going to pull that one a little bit smaller still. And then when you're happy with the little bow, you can trim off the strings again. So do that with each of your pieces of fabric. So we're now ready to attach the fabric to the basket. So begin by applying glue to the inside edges of the basket. and then around the outside edge. Like that. Make sure you're at the front of the basket, and obviously we've got our join at the back edge there, and place the little bow so that it's in the centre of the basket. To come over that way a bit, I think. that down and again feed your fabric around. I'm just slightly covering the top of the hesse in there or the canvas. Down around the back. Feed it around the other side. Again snip off any excess fabric if you need to. I think I'm okay this time. Then you can put some glue on that flap. Glue that down. Press the flaps together. Like that. And then we're going to press that inside. So go in with the sides first like that and then bring in your front and back at the same time. And then use your finger just to press that all against the inside of the crate. Really flatten it against the insides. Like that. That can then be put to one side to dry. And you can do the same with your remaining baskets. Finish off your basket by gluing a square of fabric into the bottom to tidy up the inside. And there is the completed desk. And I'm really pleased with that. I love the coordinating fabrics as well. 
I think I might use some more of those in the craft room. And now I can't wait to go and try that into place. I'm going to have that sit in just across there. So that's central there. I think that looks really good. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that this is a piece that you will have a go at making for your own craft room or study. I'm really looking forward to making some bits and pieces to go on top of there. And now I know the height, I'll be able to attach my little notice board and that will sit up there. So for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.